Perfect. We're recording. <laughs> well, thank you, Sheila. Uh, my name is Crystal Boyd. I'm part of Valley's Land Acknowledgement Task Force, and thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I'd like to start. I'll read our land acknowledgement statement. Then I'll just give a quick update about what our task force has been doing. And we have a couple friends and partners who are going to speak today as well. Jim will share some great information about an organization that he's involved with, Makoche Chupi, and his wife Roxanne is here as well. And Tiana LaPointe, the producer for a video I'm going to talk about, she'll be here in a minute to share a little bit as well. So to get started, I'd like to read our land acknowledgement statement. Valley Community Presbyterian Church sits on the ancestral and contemporary land of the Dakota people, for whom the land holds historical, spiritual, political, and cultural significance. We acknowledge the ongoing injustices that we have committed against the Dakota people and pledge to interrupt this legacy. We will educate ourselves about our indigenous history and recognize, support, and advocate for our native neighbors. So thank you for being here today to jump it right into that part about educating ourselves. We're here to learn and to open our hearts and minds to learning more. And as part of that, Valley has had a very active land acknowledgement task force. Um, we have a, a small and dedicated group of people who have been working on this for over two years now. And since we met with you last October, since last Indigenous Peoples Day, we've had a busy calendar. Uh, you might remember last year we dedicated the Peace Poll. It was part of the children's sermon. So I'm going to kind of pick up from there and move forward. We dedicated that Peace Poll with the Dakota language last October. And then in November, we hosted an intergenerational story time. We invited a Dakota storyteller, Fern Renville, to come. Some of you might have been part of that. She told some great stories from the Dakota culture. And it was really important that it was an intergenerational story time. These stories weren't just for kids, they're for everyone. We can all learn together from those stories. Um, you might remember our oral history project, the Haha -ha Wakpada or Bassett Creek Oral History Project. Um, we wrapped that up at the end of last year. And the person we had hired to help us with that project, Dr. Casey Keeler, mm -hmm. she gave a presentation at the Golden Valley Historical Society. So this project has gotten bigger and bigger, many partners along the way, and Dr. Keeler was so fantastic. She helped us present that outside the church to reach out to the community. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to thank those people who were interviewed. We had 14 indigenous people from the watershed who gave interviews, and we brought them here actually to this room last November to do a nice thank you brunch. And that was really valuable because they got to connect with each other, you know, talk to each other as they talk about their experience with the project, and also to emphasize to us some of their priorities for the watershed. So they outlined three main takeaways that they wanted us to think about, sort of guidelines as we move forward. Um, they talked about the importance of truth telling, telling the truth, recognizing history, not always as it's told in history books, right? There's more history to learn and more nuances to history. So truth telling through things like land acknowledgement or um, land back is another form of truth telling. Um, the second thing was that we're all related. We're all related um, in this together. And even it was it was kind of interesting to think about different ways things are related, right? People are related. We think about those relationships a lot. And then Julie did a great job today in the children's sermon, helping us think about how the natural world is related to people and even how the natural world is related to itself thinking about the little creek and the big river, those relationships even coming through in language like Haha ha Wakpada and Haha ha Wakpa, Bassett Creek and the Mississippi River, all those big relationships. And then that third piece was land back. I actually put that out of order. Um, so I said truth telling was about land acknowledgement and using indigenous place names. And that third big theme is land back, thinking about how we can return land to Dakota people or other indigenous groups, depending where it is. So that all came out of November, which was really nice. We got some good guidelines for going forward. In December, we um, gave the transcripts of the oral histories to the Hennepin History Museum. So we interviewed people and typed it up. So you have an option to listen to it or read it. Sometimes you hear different things depending on how you interact with the story. So all of that is saved at Hennepin History Museum. And then from January through April, we worked on how to make those available online. <laughs> Um, I'm just giving a little update and then we'll, then we'll show the video. So this is perfect. Um, so we got the interviews online so that the transcripts would be available. And in April, Jim and Roxanne presented as well. So this brings us right to a great quote. This is perfect. So um, I'll admit that sometimes I struggle with feeling insecure about how to pronounce words in other languages. 
So I felt a little nervous sometimes when I was trying to say the name of the creek, Kahawakada. And we thought a pronunciation video would be really helpful. So this is Tiana LaPointe. She was our video Morning. producer. <laughs> and uh, I'll just say a couple more things and then we'll play the video. Does that sound good? Perfect. Um, so Tiana did a great video. A couple other things we did this year is we collaborated with Hennepin History Museum to get a grant um, from the St. Anthony Falls Heritage Board. And that helps us to continue this work, to keep bringing it out to the community and bringing community groups together to think about the creek as a Dakota place. Um, we do have the interviews online. You can listen to them now through Spotify or YouTube, so they're available. And Sheila, if you... Um, oh, so here's our new land acknowledgement webpage. Many of you might have seen the new church webpage. We also have a page dedicated to land acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can find it right there. Yeah. And so there's a link right to the Oral History Project. Wow. Um, cool. All that is laid out. You can read about wow. press release different videos, but then the new podcast series is linked right there, as well as the new video is linked right there. So mm -hmm. makes it awesome. Video. And then the podcasts are also down here. You can scroll up. Yeah. So, so this is if you want to listen to it on YouTube, you can just yeah. tune in on YouTube and play right through. Or if you like Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, it's pushed out to all the different platforms. So you can just Link and I've been listening to them in my car as I drive to swimming in the morning. So I just <laughs> listen as I go. That's really helpful. Um, <laughs> and so I While we do some commercials, I'll just say quickly that um, we advertise this video on Facebook a lot. We shared it through Hennepin History Museum and to all the local Facebook groups. If you're part of Facebook and have other friends or groups you want to share it with, please share it. It's been really popular and helpful, I think. So just kind of use it as a resource for the community. There we go. Kahawakpada means Falls Creek. It is the Dakota name for Bassett Creek. The creek connects with Kahawakpa, which means Falls River, and is one of the Dakota names for the Mississippi River. These waterways originally connected just north of Wamini Yomini, or St. Anthony Falls, in Minneapolis. Using Dakota place names helps to honor the people who have lived here for thousands of years. Now several Dakota speakers will teach us how to pronounce the Greek Dakota name. Kahawakpa. Kahawakpadam. Kahawakpadam. So Wakpa is river. Wakpadam would be creek. And Kaha is the falls, the river of the falls, Kahawakpa, or the creek that leads into the river of the falls is Kahawak Padam. And that's what now has that English name, Bassett Creek, which flows from this uh, medicine lake uh, about eight miles to Kahawak Pa. Uh -huh. Ah, and
So those are all of our partners. Um, the City of Golden Valley contributed and helped through their DEI Commission and the Bassett Creek Watershed Management Commission partner. So we had a lot of good community support. Um, and I'd love to invite Tiana to come up and speak a little bit about her work, um, both on this project and beyond. She's done a lot of great videos. Welcome, Tiana. How about a round of applause? <laughs> Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my name is Tiana Lapointe. I'm speaking from Lakota Reservation in South Dakota. <laughs> my Lakota name is Wambli Wakomi, Sacred Eagle Woman. Um, I've been a documentary filmmaker since maybe I was 13 years old, um, 35 now. So I've been doing this work within our own respective communities, um, sharing our own respective stories. Um, so I actually got a lot of help with this project in particular from my husband, who's also an Ojibwe language teacher. So he helped um, make sure we had students um, to be filmed. Hmm. What should I share? <laughs> Tell us if you have the students. So what's that process like? They look cute. Yeah. So the students were all really great. Um, they had really good energy. I was feeling really energized. Um, they were really happy. Um, we had a lot of students interested, um, so we got a lot of students on camera. Some students didn't make it just because of audio problems, but a lot of the students are from different tribes around the country. So the school is called Biddle Tay Learning Center. So it's um, a school um, through an indigenous lens. Um, Nisha, do you want to share anything about Biddle Tay? Yeah. Probably interested a little bit better. So um, over at the Dote Learning Center is a language immersion program in which we teach the uh, kids through an immersion lens. Um, so um, quite typically, um, most of our curriculum is in Ojibwe Moen. Um, and um, same with the other side, which is the Dakota. Um, and um, for the most part, um, we've been doing it for um, for a very long time. We've been able to um, um, develop a, um, a, you know, like, a, 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 like, a little, well, we, so every time my elder passes away in our community, we say a, a, a library closes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. now, but through the Delta Learning Center, we're opening many little libraries. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the way we kind of look at it because, you know, these kids are going to be learning their language throughout their lives. And, you know, we, um, we encourage them to, uh, to use it as much as they can throughout their everyday life. And so, um, yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Um, I, I teach uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade um, Ojibwe language, and um, it, it's been a really fun time. I, I've been there for about three years, and then prior to that, um, I also taught over at American Indian Magnet School for three years. Um, so, yeah, I'm having a really great time at it. Where's the learning center? Where is it located? It's, uh, it's basically off of 29th and uh, 30th. Okay. It's, at, uh, it's located at uh, St. Albert the Great Church mm -hmm. in uh, South Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, Bujun Nindu, Nijugabo Nindu, Nijugabo Nindu, 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 yeah, yeah, on the Manoa, yeah. <laughs> so what I said there is uh, two standing men is my, uh, or hello, my relatives. Um, two standing men is my name. Um, I'm from the Wolf Clan, um, and I, I'm from the Leech Lake Reservation, but I live um, in, in St. Paul right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> and you have two founders here of the Oh, really? Yeah. Very yeah. yeah. good. Jim Roth and myself. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Good. Alex gave a shout out to Roxanne's research. Um, she's one of those unsung upstream heroes. Um, she dedicated her whole life to indigenous education. And um, Madote and so many projects that you are aware of uh, wouldn't have started. And so I've been along for the ride as a co-founder of that school. But my dad had that vision as well. There were several elders 
that we should and could have both Ojibwe and Dakota being taught in the same building as our students grow together. Mm -hmm. If you understand how colonization and driving a wedge and these treaties that were not honored, and honestly, I know I was raised with the same St. Paul School education. We're now working with transform the fact that Lincoln, you only hear the good side of it. You know what I'm saying? So basically he had his cronies uh, set up the money. Now, all this historical research, the truth has come out. And it turns out, of course, that it, it, it was driving a wedge. So we're, we've got the dote to try to heal that way. But my wife's research was looking at language revitalization in particular uh, with the Maori and uh, in, in Aotearoa and with the Hawaiians and Hawaii. And so they've been very successful at bringing their languages back in spite of horrendous uh, challenges. And so the opportunity to use those techniques, learn from them, her dissertation, I should be talking all about her work, let her tell me. Uh, basically, it took seven years for the Minnesota Department of Education all kinds of other schools. Now, again, see how divide and conquer works. I don't have resentment against the Somali community or Russian or Korean adoptees or all these other schools, German, French, that were getting their authorization. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I know we're recording, so whatever. It's time to be truth. Sorry, but I would say, I guess I won't name the names of your education officials who would say to us, oh, come on, you're just going to I'm going to drone down by that cage. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of us with our PhDs around, you know, it, yeah, so Roxanne, I'm so sorry if I stepped on Please, would you also, I don't want to step on our interviews too, but there's a great history of your people. You're the, you're the, the important leaders there now. Yes. Yeah, um, new generation. Yeah, you're the new, you're the new generation. Thank you. Gina Rich, uh, Nina will be the first for the work that you do. It's really important. Um, you know, we're, we're retired now, we're elders now, so we're here to support you. Mm -hmm. um, that work, the work that I did was 20 years ago. And then, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I just said that we're um, the Jim Meyer elders now are retired. We're here to support these young people doing this this work. The work that I did was 20 years ago, um, but it's beautiful and it's important to see um, what you're doing now with that. So I and I said Timmy Gwich, which is thank you, big thank you, and would you blame away? And Nina Wolpika, which is thank you. In, in Keeping the dream alive. <laughs> yeah. So, could you say a little bit about uh, why you think language is important, how you came to this work, and your work with water also? Okay. Um, I do a lot of work with my Tabahe so uh, family. Uh, so, my Tabahe represents. Uh, our community uh, yearly of the United Nations permanent farm on indigenous issues. I usually document everything, all of our experiences, and then I gather interviews with anybody that we've created relationships with. We also coordinate this water summit in Rapid City, South Dakota, that just had happened in August. Um, we had a lot of international lawyers come to participate in the summit, and there was a really beautiful turnout. Um, Language has always been a big part of my family. My daughters are actually learning Dakota. Um, actually, she went to Ojibwe. She was learning Dakota since she's three. She's 12 now. Um, so this year, she wanted to learn Ojibwe over at the American Indian Magnet School in St. Paul. Yeah, she doesn't want to learn from me. <laughs> um, so I do a lot of my work. Um, it's based on like sacred sites. My first one was when I was 15. I um, created a documentary on um, a sacred site on the Pinehurst Reservation. The Tubal's family is protecting the sacred site from um, being desecrated by National Park Service. It's a sacred site that uh, was 
almost an unknown massacre that had happened after the really in the winter. So the family there protected that space, that area in the Badlands that was on the reservation. So I got to know that family growing up, and um, that's where I learned like the importance of being able to share the story of the land. Um, my mom is a, a current Lakota speaker. Um, my dad is also a Lakota speaker. Um, I'm still learning. I think I'm still in the beginning stages. <laughs> Um, I did make a film on my daughter's experience, um, learning since the age of three. So I have that as, as well, sharing her personal experience and our personal experiences on the language. What, why is it important for us to tell our own stories? Can you talk about that? I was taught that our, voice, our voices are medicine. And a lot of Indigenous people still believe that to this day. And being able to share our own stories, we put medicine into those stories using our voices. And I think that's why it's important to tell our own stories, because we know what medicines we need and what we need to share to heal. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're both here and for sharing. Jan is an amazing videographer. She did a great job with our video. And so if other folks are doing this kind of work or know someone who is, I really recommend that you refer them to Tiana because she does fantastic videos and can tell these stories through her voice and the voices of her community. So just one last thing that I'll mention um, before I turn it over to Jim here is that we do have a capstone celebration in November. So the congregation is invited to come back to help us celebrate sort of wrapping up one phase of the project and looking ahead to new phases. This work is never done, but it's kind of happening in phases. So there is an event, yeah, Sheila, right here on November 11th. You can sign up, make sure to register. It'll be about an hour of presentation and discussion, and then about an hour of lunch. It's a free will donation. We'll have um, native foods and beverages. So yeah, please feel free to register. If you have any questions, let me know. So again, that's Saturday, November 11th, from 10.30 to 12.30 here at Valley. We'd love to see you. We'd love to celebrate together, continue learning, and let me know if you have any questions. Maybe we should do one or two questions and then share. Yeah, any questions from the congregation about the Land Acknowledgement Task Force? What can I help with? Yeah, but I had a question before. Um, you refer to yourselves as founders? No, the school. Founders of the school. Of the Dope Day Learning Center. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't know if that had a significance to you as you became an elder or what you meant of the school. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But the Dope Day Learning Center. And it's so cool to see this all come full circle and connect and right with. Those kids were great too. Yeah, that was a good addition. All right. Well, if there's anything else, yeah, Julie. Um, I think I have a question about sort of how this project can be in the first place. Like, did, whose idea was it? Uh, you know, how did the sort of collaborations um, start? I mean, I know just a little bit about it, but I wonder if you wanted to tell a little more of that story. Yeah. Um, Crystal, that would be really Thank helpful. you. That's a great question, Julie. I should, probably should have led with that. So about two years ago, Valley was starting to write a land acknowledgement statement, and my mom um, asked if I'd like to be involved. I've done a lot with the Golden Valley Historical Society, so she thought I might have some resources to share. Um, but one of my other skills is that I also do a lot of grant writing. So I knew how to get a grant from the state of Minnesota, a legacy amendment grant. And that helped us to start this oral history project. And through that, we had two cultural advisors at first. And then later, when we got a grant from the St. Anthony Falls Heritage Board, we have four cultural advisors through that. So we've been making these community connections, reaching out. And Dr. Keeler from Wisconsin was really key. She grew up in the tourist cities and was able to help us connect with the Native communities um, and to help sustain those relationships, which have just kept growing. Yeah. And just one more follow-up question. The land acknowledgement statement came first. Did we have cultural advisors in that process of writing the land acknowledgement statement? Great, great question. We um, we wrote the land acknowledgement statement with a lot of help from the Native Governance Center. They have a lot of great resources. So if anyone's writing the land acknowledgement statement, that's a good place to look. And then through the two grants, we were able to pay cultural advisors to be on for sort of like a short project duration, um, which works out pretty well. You get to establish a relationship. It benefits both sides. People are compensated for their time. Um, but it's also not indefinite, right? Because a lot of people are very busy. So we say, hey, we'd really love your advice for a short period of time if you're willing. And people were. They really showed up for us, which was great. And I'll just make one more comment. Um, I really love the, the land acknowledgement statement 
has an action component to it and talks about you know what we're going to do moving forward because if it's just a the acknowledgement that you know it feels like yeah. it falls short mm -hmm. so I really think that you did a fantastic job with including that action okay. well thank you and when you all are listening to your interviews on spotify the narrators will tell you that too landing dollars we can't just be words on a piece of paper it has to be the actions beyond that so valley is leaning into that and jim i'd love to hand it over to you if you'd like <laughs> Yeah, and uh, thank you so much for opening up. And uh, to do what Dr. Roxanne and, and her mom, uh, also, you know, without mom, <laughs> <laughs> it not happen. All right, attention for you later. <laughs> Can I give you this microphone? Sure. Um, <laughs> our word for mom is Ina, I N A, Ina. 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 And uh, and mother, mom. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just a couple things to share about this. Um, there's a Dakota footpath, uh, I'm wearing, uh, you, you kind of want to keep your moccasins dry, right? <laughs> so, most of this is wetland. It should be, it was. To make parking lots, wetlands are drained. Mm -hmm. Our relatives go away. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for your golden thread umbilical cord lesson. Mm -hmm. That was so perfect because we learned this way. You know, uh, <laughs> we've got it on tape. You guys need it. You can use it at the note there too. So it's so cool. And I uh, also want to acknowledge Sarah's here from uh, Como Elementary Planetarium. We were co-workers when I was working around the uh, planetarium at University of Minnesota Duluth. And so a church and a planetarium have this architecture. Mm -hmm. Really, if you think about it, it's meant to be the sky mm -hmm. and we on the earth. And that's this kapemini. Kapemini is our way of saying, mini is water, mini is the mirror. And mini sota makoche, the land where the water reflects the sky. See? Mm -hmm. Now this looks like two flat triangles. It's not. It's a vertical slice through a teepee. <clears throat> so, you know how a teepee has those poles. Yeah. And we don't have time to explain today, but I've got a few slides that will show some of this. <clears throat> um, we'll kind of hunt and peck and find the right ones, but it's not, you know, just the teepee that we lived in. Um, they were pretty amazing and they're portable. But in Minnesota, when you're 60 below Fahrenheit, it's climate chaos, who knows now, we had earth lodges. And so as Pastor Richard explained down in his hometown at Mount Lake, which, uh, yeah, through the Harders, uh, they donated the building, but we purchased the land. Uh, I think he said they donated the land, but it, and so we've been raising funds for another project that Roxanne and I are co-founders on with Dr. Wazia Tomi and her husband, uh, Z, that's by a short name, uh, and, and several other founders. And I guess I should mention that uh, the first voice you heard, you did see his face, Shishoka Tuta. Shishoka Tuta, uh, my, my nephew, um, and his, his wife, Katie. You see, Sarah and I work with Katie too. We're putting together productions similarly because every school student in St. Paul, at least elementary, I don't, I'm hoping to grow it. And from American Indian Manning School, of course, uh, I grew up in that area, at, uh, what was called uh, Dayton's Bluff <laughs> in the Mounds Park. All of these sites are going through a decolonizing process where I recognize, I grew up there too. I'm European also. It's hard to change, but I think you see out of justice is long overdue. And so the TB has this rope that ties everything together. See why that golden thread lesson is so critical. That's what that means. It's an umbilical cord to the earth mother who holds us all. One ball holds us all. And that cord goes up through the TB, those holes point to stars above there, that are directly then connected to places down here. So there's a star by the Milky Way 
that matches a cave in St. Paul down by the river. So there's a little two, three minute video in this one. We can go there. Please start. Thank you so much, Sheila. This, this is not easy. So, um, pull up my uh, slide number seven, please. Put big on that one so you can see. Just as Roxanne's mom and my auntie. Um, yeah, and this is a song that we had earlier, so you can click, click, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and see that's that's what's going to happen. Seven days. There's a path of sun and moon, an eclipse path across Turtle Island, and it starts in uh, Oregon, go down uh, Utah, and down through San Antonio, and then Texas, and goes down through Central America and on into Colombia and out across the Amazon. Brazil. And uh, understanding these patterns of sun and moon, there's a lot of math in that. People say, ah, you know, these Indians, they don't really do math. <laughs> did you know, we Choni song we did this morning? We Choni, we Choni, be modest suing, be modest suing, we Choni. We, that's a three and a five. How do you connect a three and a five? With the two, four heartbeat. Love the dope. Well, two, three, four, five. It's the best way to learn. So we were trying to teach our teachers who would become the teachers at Adote and pass on from my dad mm -hmm. ways I learned that go far beyond. We didn't have the PhDs. Yes, we did. <laughs> they didn't come with a piece of paper uh, like that Wizard of Oz, you know, handing it out for Kirby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop watching. Oh, okay. I only had a break. Okay. So thank you. Next. <laughs> I'll tell you. And that's our Takosha 16 years ago. Uh, now she's one of the youth uh, council, uh, young elders, you might say at 16, but uh, because her first five years, she had daily Ojibwe immersion with three of our uh, nukos. Um And when I tried to talk to Kota to her, she go, oh, we. <laughs> so, you know, uh, next. <laughs> Yeah, they're like 900 moons apart. And I'll tell you, died here, went back to the stars in 2010. So mm -hmm. almost 13 years ago. And how many heartbeats we get, right? How many drum beats? The heart is the drum. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. So we love you to the moon and back. Well, that the speed of light, that's only one and a third seconds, you know. So, uh, <laughs> we want love to last longer than that. <laughs> here's, our, here's our other grandson. And that's why they left early. Grandson's mom, our daughter-in-law, Red Lake, uh, he's Red Lake uh, enrolled as well. The rest of us are, you know, Sisitawan, Dakota, and uh, Roxanne is uh, Michigan, uh, uh, Grand Traverse, Little Traverse Bay, Bands of Odawa, and Ojibwe. But she was raised uh, in South Dakota among Dakotas and Nakotas, her uh, grandfather, I believe, is Nakota. So, yeah, he's a chicken dancer, uh, he's taking first place. So, the two grandkids are really about the same age, about a year apart. So thank you. Next. And so as sun and moon, as male and female, as sky and earth, we come together as TP poles. We're tied together. We're in community. And sadly, we were pushed out with a $200 price tag on our heads. And so turtle Island, thank you. Yeah, just keep flipping a bit here and we'll get to the slide where it's a little two minute video. Go ahead. There we go. Thank you. That's all. Okay. I'll see if I can make it. <laughs> if the audio comes through, yeah. And uh, this is an amazing artist who uh, I recorded the audio and she made the visual from the audio. And this is Marlena Matz, who is getting a lot of recognition. I'm talking about the. I'm there with Stan. I'm very used to it. We used to sit in black hair. So I'm going in my object. I'm being connected with my object. I'm a photo. To see the one, I'm going to that amount of um, all my relatives. I speak here today with a glad heart, up in my hand. My dad is to see the one Dakota of the Southern Starfire Nations. My name is Jim Rock in English. I was born at Imanisha Ska at Machade. I was born at uh, St. Paul, at near place called Wakam TV, the cave 
uh, in which we have the drawings that tell something of our cosmic origins. So what I do is in the planetarium. I was, you know, trained in Western science, but always kept our own ways of thinking here. And the two legs have really come together well in that the word nucleosynthesis, it just means that atoms are made of stars. And we've always said we come from the stars to the stars we return. We come from the earth to the earth we return. The iron in our blood, the carbon in our body had to come from a sun before this sun. So we're recycled stardust. Star stuff are us, I think they said. Not what we talk about the Milky Way is like a river, not just any river, but Hahawakba or Wakpatanga, Wakpahaska, big long river, the river of the waterfall. We find burial mounds near river. It's very intentional. It's not random. <laughs> Our elders, those that have passed on, deserve the highest place near water to go back up to the stars, the place of honor, by the water that flows. Chama, 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 Waka Chama, the sacred tree, Sundance tree, the cottonwood tree is filled with stars. That tree full of stars connects between sky and earth. Along rivers, it likes its feet wet and its roots. The tree is a bridge. It's a bridge between the river down here with sparkling lights on it and the sparkling stars above. The Wanagi Tachamku, the spirit road, the road of spirits that we come from and go back to. And we need to be living in a good way so that we go back to that place we come from um, with integrity, with generosity. Nice. And um, mm. uh, my dad never wanted attention. He would hardly even let us take his picture, mm. record his voice. No, mm -hmm. he had so much to share. He didn't use or speak English till he was 12. And he was mentored as the youngest Takoja grandson. His grandma lived to be eight days short of 100. Mm. Much wisdom. She had multiple PhDs. She knew the plant medicines, which are connected to the stars. We even have stars that are plants. And, and that combination of wisdom knows that you plant the seeds around May 20 when the sun is in the buffalo's head. And the buffalo's head uh, constellation, it, well, that's a star cluster called the Pleiades. So when the sun moves through the Pleiades, ah, it's probably frost free. Whereas now we're getting our first frosts, right? Now that's how it used to work. Climate chaos has shifted all of this. And that's very much why the elders taught him stories about previous times like this, where it either got too hot or it got too cold. And we say, this is hard to hear, that the Earth Mother cleansed herself. She had to shake us off. It happened more than once. We had to go inside her. But isn't that where we all come from? Inside Ina, Mama, Aki, Aki, Mama. These are our original water cups. My coffee mug here. The mini, right? <laughs> Keep it with you. Yeah, it's reusable and sustainable. I love your solar panels. You know, it's uh, so. Everything we needed was from the buffalo. So we're the buffalo people because those stars I shared with briefly and drawn on the cave ceiling were the bison. But also turtle, elk, tobacco plants, uh, salamander, and snake. And at, at first you're like, well, what? Hmm. Nobody told me, oh, that cave was a planetarium. Mm -hmm. The planetarium is just the Western science way to say it's a cathedral that tells the story of our origin, our cosmology. It is as sacred as, you know, this is pushing it a bit. I don't mean to offend anyone. Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Dome of the Rock, Temple Mount. We don't know in these press reports, as war was declared yesterday, we know here very painfully how 
those of the land before those who came to the land with or without God's blessing, with or without some leaders saying, now it's your land. Mm -hmm. We heard pastor talk about Jesus' words today that we are all on the land of not land we personally own in spite of paying taxes and having those deeds. Mm -hmm. It's land that was given to us for a while. Mm -hmm. We come last as humans. These are the ones who've been here before us. These are the ones, including the little birds that teach us. And so I just mentioned that briefly because this represents Venus, morning star, evening star. But that's, again, the Roman name. In decolonizing all this, there's so much to explain. You see Venus in the morning for nine moons, nine months coming up before the sun. Then you don't see Venus and for about 50 days. Then you see Venus, what, where's, oh, there she is following down the sun in the west, again, for nine months. Then you don't see Venus for about eight days. That entire cycle is 584 days. And if you have five of those five cycles, well, you get eight years. And we had an eight-year-old birthday today. And you see the eight points of this. That's for Venus to take eight years to come back. We're riding on one planet, one walking star, mm -hmm. and Venus is on the racetrack, one lane closer to the sun. So it's it's these numbers, five, eight, and 13. And the, the 13 is on a turtle shell. You can't make this stuff up. You just need to learn it. <laughs> See, it's all there. Creator gave us the, the messages. So is this science or culture or spirituality or language? The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it took us seven years to convince Minnesota Department of Ed. Yeah, we can do your grad standards. We've always had these standards and more. And so I know there's there's fear and, uh, and all that, but... Just like doing the songs today, it worked. I know I it wasn't like, you know, we had 30 years to practice, but um, so I like to have three women usually. I have a whole bag of bison bones and I keep them with my sage and I, I honor them, keep them appropriate. Today I didn't roll in the whole suitcase of everything because I did the music. So you can picture these three bones are the three stars you saw in that last video. Orion's belt. No, Orion was a genocidal killer. He was a hunter. He killed all the animals off, and Zeus didn't like it very much. You see, the Greek stories became the basis for Greco Roman, Egypto Babylonian values. And remember, Moses was raised in Egypt. And there were 42 things you weren't supposed to do. It's kind of cool. He went up on the mountain, came down with 10. You know, <laughs> I didn't keep track of 10, but anyway, so. Um, so the three belt stars are the three backbone bison vertebrae. And one of these represents that cave. And, you know, I didn't get to learn all this at age five. They kind of watch me and say, yeah, well, you know, he's, he's European too. I mean, he hangs around with schools, you know, and he likes math and science. Oh. <laughs> and he starts fires with these glasses. <laughs> no, don't, don't tell him all the secrets right away, right? <laughs> well, the scary secret is right here. Here's one of the scariest sounds you could learn. And I grew up right by them. <laughs> James J. Hill. Put the flashing red one on the first national bank building. That's where his money went. After he drained the swamp, dynamited the cave. You know, it's all connected dots. I don't need to go on it. You've been very patient. And I guess I'm just saying, Pahawak uh, Padam, or Pahawak Padam. The second syllable is usually emphasized, sometimes not. And it, you know, it's two words. So how you say it? No, just say it from the heart. Chante Etan. And um, so if you click briefly on 19, you know, I never got a penny for this star book. Um, I was interviewed by, uh, there's two women and one of the other women never got a penny either. Um, I can't say that for the other one necessarily. Let me say an analogy. If, if your hymnal, or your biblical instructional curriculum. Ooh, see what I'm getting at? You put your name on there, how would you feel about selling your spiritual founding principles and making some mandaska off of that, Junior? 
I, I, you know, so we wanted to give it away, but we also know it's not, it's not reducible to a flat book. It needs to be moving and alive. And so we just put a few simple things in there. And if you go down to the 24, water of life, a drop of water stays in Lake Superior for 200 years. And unfortunately, those glacial fish that have been there for 10,000 years, it's the fastest warming. Mm -hmm. It's the deepest and the coldest, but it's the fastest warming of the five great lakes. <laughs> Our Earth Mother is telling us she has a fever. We go one more click down, please. Look at this. As the glaciers retreated, you know, Turtle Island had these amazing uh, ecosystems, uh, biomes, habitat. The Minnesota River, Minnesota, the Wakpa, Minnesota, used to be so full of beautiful, you know, relatives, fish, mussels, clams, indigenous species of mussels. They're, it's, it's hyper nitrated and phosphated and you better not even dip your towel in there. Mm -hmm. And then it comes together, but don't they means where two rivers joined. So where the Mississippi or the Hawakpa joins the uh, Minnesota Wakpa, that's Padote. That's our mother belly button center of the universe, the four directions, right? And so uh, you go down one more and, and you get the there. So the Gigun and the Hokama, you have you know, the fish are relatives. And those ancient fish, you know, the, I mean, the sturgeon, you know, do you have plans about that, you know? And we're reintroducing, I can't tell you where, those, those sturgeon can be 80, I mean, <laughs> I put it on in the English, but way down in Alabama, our relatives have been teaching us how they're getting their land back. Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill, um, relatives, right? Um, they got 1,200 acres back. And uh, they're introducing bison, mm -hmm. the, the old sturgeon, and, and ancient forms of, again, the chickens and pigs. And, and they're living sustainably, only using their language, minimal solar panel and such. Uh, our project in Koche Kichibi, you just very quickly jump out and click to the last uh, website so that you can go study about the Makoche website anyway. And uh, it'll tell you more about our, our founding principles there. Is so that 90% of us who aren't here anymore, only 10% of any Dakota descendants or Nakota or Lakota, DNL, there's four Dakotas. To Nakota and Lakota. And even the Lakota, there's seven. And it, it's all about the seven. It's just it's kind of biblical way, too, right? And so um, it's the way we're socio politically, geographically, and spiritually connected to each other. So we know who we are. We like those TV poles. So, yeah, this is a website, Makoche uh, and Kikjubi, no space, no space, dot com. Kind of cool if it was dot org, but, you know, <laughs> so we're not, you know, we're, we're saying, Allies can help us, can donate money. So Dakotas and Nakotas and Lakotas who want to come back here, because at one point we weren't the four, the two, and the one. We were one. We began mm -hmm. all of them. And over time, we spread out. And it was more than Minnesota, parts of western Wisconsin, Canada, as well as the Dakotas, parts of Iowa. We were a large group of people as we grew. And some of us depended more on bison. Some had bison and fish and wild rice. We no longer have our lands in Northern Minnesota with the wild rice. Do you know how hard it is to try to buy a piece of land with water that you can drink that's now full of forever chemicals and mercury? <laughs> it's right by copper mines. Yeah. And for, I mean, that's why I'm a chemist and an astronomer and, a, and I work with the legislature. This was when we started to build our, our Earth Lodge. We finally got the land, we, you know, we got the money, thank you all, and we got a piece of land up by Pejuta Zizi, Upper Sioux, Granite Falls. We built it technically just barely within city limits, two miles. And so they came to us as soon as we started bark, removing the bark on the tamarack trees so that we could put four in the middle, 13 around. And that's all based on star architecture, turtle numbers, moons, 13 moons. In here. They came to us and said, hold out your wrist, you're going to be arrested. Can't do that. You have to have sheetrock, plumbing, electricity, water. Uh, say, you know, this could fall on you. It's like, where are your hard hats? 
you're violating Minnesota building code. We're like, well, you're kind of violating. No, we didn't go into that. We didn't go into that, you know, because you transform people more through heart. Love, what I tell you, my dad was the most loving ambassador, and I try not to go spicy because the spice burns. I'm um, James, like my name. If you own that book, you can use that tongue. You better be careful how you use it. Can't pull the words back. So, anyway. We're grateful we got our second piece of land. And actually down there, Mountain Lake was like, well, can we help you build these? <laughs> well, totally different because we had to get a law changed. That's all, just as COVID was coming. We had to find Republican and Democrat folks in the House and the Senate. They, we had to fight first their two attorneys. We didn't have money for attorneys, you kidding? And they said, bring your attorneys. Yeah, right. Our attorney, our highest law is our pipe and our stem filling fill full of prayer. Yeah. And after five hours, they were on our side mm. <laughs> with the mayor, the city council, and so forth. But we still, all we could get was a law that says you can ask daddy for permission. Speaking very colloquially, because come on, big words, yeah. It basically says, you know, there's still that Minnesota building code, but maybe if you ask real nice. <laughs> so we were grateful when uh, Mountain Lake says, oh, you want to build Earth Lab? That sounds cool. <laughs> we didn't have to, like, you know. Anyway, you're trying to have time with your time achievement, which, uh, uh, yeah, so I don't even know what time it is, but it's, it's noon, but you have four minutes to yeah, and, and I don't know that either of you have, have heard this piece or connected. You see how these multiple, multiple sites of uh, decolonizing love, sweat, prayer, yeah, is coming together. I, I wish my dad could see. Mm -hmm. Roxanne's yeah. dad too. You know, we both had uh, white moms. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any any comments, reaction? Yes, sir. One comment. There are only two licensed architects in the state of Minnesota that are Native American who work with one yes. stamp. Well, I know Dennis Sunroads. Was he one of the previous ones? Or was he? Say that again. He may have retired. Dennis Sunroads, uh, Shoshone Lab. So, yes. Mike Little, Lonely Moore, and okay. Sam Oblex, who we work with. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's out from Minneapolis. Huh? Right now. What I would say to you guys who are teaching young people is we need more Native American architects. Mm -hmm. I would love to have a Native American. I love architect. architecture, star architecture, the physics. Yeah, yeah the physics of it, the yeah. star architect. I oh, love seeing you make some videos. Be something completely different to you than it does to us. Good old. Yeah, well, you got a card and let's recruit some more uh, libraries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. So much. Any, any more comments? <laughs> yeah, and your son <laughs> was one of my students years ago. Well, too. I mean, it's all coming together because he'd and come then, home. My son would come home, he's now what, 43, 44, and he'd come home and he'd go, Mom, I've got this teacher, and he yeah. would start telling me he's stuff. Weird. Yeah. He, he says, he says this place that I'm learning in is called Waziata. Waziata. And, and when he tries to write Waziata, he takes out that first A, puts an H, and puts a question mark after it. <laughs> Why is that? It's not English, it's not the quota. Waziata means north. Um, you know, we've been growing allies as well as our own folks, and uh, those are the teepee poles, those are the tamarack trees within this solid structure that is very sustainable. We built those up in Northeast and South Dakota, and we did have 60 below zero in polar vortex, 60 above in there. But pretty much the earth temperature, it's, it's mostly below surface, and but we also put it you know, right on the pavement. We, there's things we, we can do. Uh, we're just trying to be very traditional initially. Uh, in Mount Lake, they may have more solar fans or air exchange, whatever. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one more comment. Yes, sir. Hi, my name's Andy. I'm on the road. I'm not here at the church. I'm known for asking hard questions. Please do. I would wonder for the educators, do you have any um, non- of American young, 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 young kids in your program. Oh, yeah. Um, there's there's uh, two uh, Asian kids. Um, one of them is the son of the um, one of the people that works there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just recently we just had a uh, young Asian kid join. So, um, is it a growth potential for your work, for your school to, to incorporate 
more and more kids? Um, well, I mean, if if they show an interest in uh, in Native American, um, and usually um, uh, the kids are mixed, the uh, half black, half Asian, uh, half white, because um, those are the kids that um, have the interest in the Native American culture. Um, so, I mean, we do have those kids, but I mean, generally they're mixed a little. So, you know. <laughs> to get the to get the license, to get an authorizer, as charter schools charter schools are set up. That's a whole thing we don't have time to get into. I very much believed in public schools. That's where our democracy depends, my opinion. Mm -hmm. But they weren't working. And sadly, they're still not for a whole lot of reasons. I was a public school teacher for 26 years till I also got pushed out for probably saying things like Waziata too much. <laughs> yeah, you have to be willing. And so we wanted a school by us for us. Or, and so to start out with, you have to tell them for how many? Okay, well, 50 Ojibwe, 50 Dakota, you know, and, and just trying to start with, you know, kindergarten. So you're, you're kind of growing in your feeder. And then, and so try to keep the teachers able to teach licensed Minnesota teachers who can use those languages for everything. So that's why I was teaching for a while at, you know, St. Thomas at Augsburg, University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, and then up at UME, I'm back at Twin Cities now, and teaching teachers. So what I tell you, in these hard times, do you realize what enough stream push that is? Yeah. They don't even want you to use some of the white author books anymore. Yeah, let teachers teach. <laughs> Let us be who we all are, and this democracy will work a lot better. And it won't just be human centric, anthropocentric, non human supremacy is cool, not just human supremacy, all about us. Look at what the, what's that done to a planet. Jesus said, Look at the birds. They find a nest. Well, we better because they don't have many trees anymore. Contiguous forests, that scarlet tanager was all the way to Bolivia. That instrument I was playing, Charango. We didn't have string instruments, so that was one of the cool. Oh. Yeah, we saw those guitars and mandolins, and oh, that's sweet. Let's make one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.